Critical maneuvers ahead of the Apollo 10 spacecraft, the lunar module and the command module, depend, of course, on the function of their engines. Bruce Morton at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston has a report on those critical engines that the astronauts depend on in both the two modules. Bruce? Walter, there are three main engines. Uh, there's something like 47 in all, but most of them are just uh, the reaction control system thrusters. This is the big one by, uh, by the spacecraft's present standards, the service propulsion system engine. It's uh, the one Apollo 10 used for its mid-course correction on the way to the moon, the one it used to go into orbit about the moon. And uh, I'm sure most important now from the astronauts' point of view, it's the one that uh, they'll use to get TEI, trans-Earth injection, the start of their trip home. It can be fired as many as 36 times. It has 20,500 20, pounds of thrust. It weighs about 800 pounds empty. I can verify that because we spent some time today trying to push this one around. Over next door to it is the one uh, we've been hearing the most about in the last hour or two, I would say. Uh, that's the uh, descent propulsion system monitor. The one Snoopy used as Gene Cernan and Tom Stafford swooped away from John Young in the command module and skimmed down to within 50,000 feet or so of the moon. It's also the engine which, uh, next time it's hoped, will land two astronauts on the moon. And still next to that, the one that has to take them off again, uh, we've lost your picture there, but uh, go ahead and tell us about the engine. We saw the earlier picture and know that you're now down to that small one at the end. Order the small one, uh, I'm really kind of fond there of we are. you know, if you... Uh, oh, we see you again, Bruce. I'm, uh, I'm kind of fond of this little one. Uh, if you contrast this in your mind's eye with that giant Saturn rocket that uh, lifted Apollo 10 off the Earth, this is the ascent propulsion system. Now, the three stages of that Saturn uh, have something close to 9 million pounds of thrust, as you know, Walter. This little fella has just about 3,500, and uh, on Apollo 11, it's got to do the whole job of lifting two astronauts off the surface of the moon. It's the engine which, uh, shortly now, Apollo 10 will be using in the final stages of that critical rendezvous maneuver. It doesn't really look uh, as if it had enough power to get from here to the corner drugstore, but uh, it works. The uh, theory about these things is that it's really difficult for them not to work. They've got uh, backup valves in case something goes wrong with the valves. And of course, uh, once the oxidizer and the fuel meet, it's really against all the laws of chemistry if they don't ignite. Walter? Yes, Bruce, uh, we just have had word from Mission Control that they have established contact with the command module coming around on uh, this revolution of the moon, uh, and they are just trying to establish contact with Snoopy now, who's a little bit behind the command module, sweeping down toward the moon's surface. We've got Mission Control punched in uh, to our system here, and you will hear the communications as soon as we do. Charlie Brown, uh, Houston, I cut you out at the beginning of the pass. Uh, say again, uh, what are you going to say, over? Nothing important. I'm about to lose. Uh, I just lost uh, range. That went to 320.50 miles. And I am uh, no longer in voice contact with Snoopy. I think we're just flat out of range. Uh, Roger, we copy. I can hear it very faintly in the background. Roger. It's 320 uh, nautical miles. Brown, Houston, uh, it's your computer. We're through with the load. Over. 320 nautical miles from Snoopy. Roger. Thank you. Almost the extreme range that he is scheduled to be in this uh, uh, pass and in the entire flight. The maximum. Uh, this is uh, comes up to 368 statute miles. The maximum will be 420 statute miles, uh, which will occur uh, in about uh, 10 minutes from now, about five minutes from now. And that will be their maximum range. From there on out, they will begin closing again. The command module considerably ahead of the, of the lunar module the further out you go in space, the higher you are in making the orbit of any given body, the slower you go uh, in comparison to land speed on that body, and in comparison to any... I'm just about to lose you there. 
I think that was the voice of John Stafford in Snoopy saying he's about to lose uh, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown had already said that he thought he had lost uh, Snoopy as far as communications go. They're right at the extreme range. Hello, John. Do you read it? Just barely, you guys. Did you say? In this simulation. Houston, uh, this is. briefly from John Stafford, uh, Tom Stafford, <laughs> reporting to uh, John Young. Hello, Charlie Brown, Snoopy, do you read? Roger, read your loud and clear now, or weak but clear. I read you guys. Hello, Houston, how do you read Snoopy? Roger, Snoopy, reading you five-by, over. Tom Stafford confirming right, that Houston. Yes, you ask Charlie Brown if he's still in track attitude, uh, I can't get the lock on at this distance out here, over. Uh, Roger, he had you at, he broke lock at 320 miles on the VHF. Uh, stand by, uh, we'll ask him on his attitude. Charlie Brown, Houston, are you still in uh, tracking attitude for the... Charlie Brown, Houston, are you I'm at attitude 180, which is where I'm Roger. Supposed to be right now. Roger, Charlie Brown, we copy. Uh, Snoop uh, Houston, uh, he is in uh, attitude as called for out in the uh, uh, flight plan, a 180 pitch. Uh, we got your asset looks good, and your asset batteries look good. Over. This communications is a uh, rather uh, just pressurize the asset major the test of the Roger, systems. If you'll give us uh, your computer, we need to... Uh, uh, and uh, data, we have a state back uh, there for you. Of the, uh, of the systems uh, in this uh, uh, maneuver, they were curious as to how far they would have communications. It had been hoped that the VHF, uh, very high frequency communication link, uh, the voice link between the command module and the lunar module, uh, would uh, stretch out uh, all the way to the maximum that they would be separated. This is Houston. Some attitude. It has turned out to be... Houston, uh, we show you uh, loaded uh, TIG incorrectly in T-30. TIG is 102 Over. It turns out that they uh, do not have voice communication uh, correction, uh, correction, uh, between the two spacecraft and this great distance. Uh, they have not had confirmation that they also have uh, radar contact at this distance, tracking contact. Uh, the, you heard uh, John Young in the command module say that he was in the proper attitude for that, but no confirmation that he was actually tracking the lunar module. the ignition time if Charlie Brown has to perform the maneuver uh, in case Snoopy can't. And these uh, communications... Hey, uh, how does that look to you? Looks real fine, Charlie Brown. And these communications, of course, a lot of this is uh, technical communication, the read-up of computer settings. Uh, Houston, we got the load in. The computer's yours, over. And timelines for uh, future events. Uh, Roger. Thank you very much. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment.